Hello everybody, welcome back to the Nocturnal Gaming Network. My name is Zira, and today we are once again playing Space Flight Simulator. So today we are going to go to space. We're going to make a stable orbit around the Earth, and then we're going to talk about some orbital mechanics, how actually moving in space works. So let's get right into it. Let's build our f second rocket now, actually. Whew coming up in the world we're making it somewhere so we're going to start with a hawk engine going to grab a 20 ton fuel tank um and then we want to do a separator now this module right here that we've created will be called the first stage okay so the first stage is going to be responsible for getting us out of the atmosphere that's the job of it right here. We're then going to take, hmm, I want plenty of fuel to actually demonstrate. So I'm going to do a another 20 ton fuel tank and we're going to grab a broadsword here. So basically you stack, stack the broadsword above the separator with the other fuel tank and that creates a fairing around the engine. And now we have created ourselves a second stage. Next, we're going to put another separator, we're going to put a crew capsule, and then we're going to put a parachute. And here is the next rocket that we're going to send into space. So, let's go to the simulation here. I'm going to click our rocket to turn it on. We're going to put our throttle to roughly 75%, and we're going to hit the off button and we're gonna launch so here we are we're actually a little slower this time than we were last time because we're heavier uh, but we still want the same exact thing here we want to wait till about 2,000 meters and then we're gonna turn ourselves to 45 ish degrees so let's get ready to turn right about now there we are and I didn't don't think I mentioned this, but it's better to lightly tap the buttons to turn yourself rather than just like just completely and utterly hammer them and just press them down and hold them. Because I mean, if you do that, chances are you're going to, you know, spin your craft like wildly out of control and you're not gonna like it. <laughs> so, where we're this heavy this time, we didn't quite make it out of the atmosphere. Oops, I hit the wrong button, but that's fine. There we go. <laughs> we, we forgot to uh, separate before we hit our rocket and turned it on. We're going to also go to about 35 kilometers here. There we go. And now we can turn it off. We're going to start turning to about perpendicular to the planet here. And... There we go, we tilted. Once it tilts, once we're above 2,500 meters, we can actually fast forward if we want. So we're going to fast forward to, oh, right about 33, let's just say. And then we're going to start burning. And we're going to turn the engine on. And basically, as you see, our trajectory is widening out. Now, you want to watch to make sure that you do not go past your apoapsis. If that happens, you're heading back towards the planet. And when you're doing that, it, it sort of makes it um, more likely that you're going to crash instead of actually escaping. So, yeah, we don't want to do that. We want to actually circularize ourselves here. We want to make it into orbit this time. And this has actually taken a lot of our fuel here, but I think we'll be okay. And we can just, you know, keep turning ourselves here because our angle is, you know, relative to the planet doesn't change unless we change it. But that's okay. We're almost done. Alright, and right about now we're actually going to stop and we're going to wait, because we want a nice circular orbit. So we're going to wait until we're really close to our apoapsis. Something like this, and then we'll burn again. See how 
There we go, how that's popped out the other side. That's our periapsis. Now, this will be a good time to talk about it. The apoapsis is the highest point in our current orbit. The periapsis, which is on the opposite side, is the lowest point. So we're actually going to throttle down for a second here. Basically, what we want to do, we're in orbit, by the way, is we want to circularize and make our periapsis really roughly the same as our apoapsis. So 46, I'm going to go for around 46. There we are, we're at 45 and 46. So that's pretty close here. Now, let's talk about the orbit itself. Right now, if we speed up time, you can see that we're pointing roughly in the direction we travel. Okay? Now, that is called pointing prograde. Okay, prograde is in the direction that you are orbiting around. Now, as we make our way to the other side of the planet, because we aren't rotating around just normally unless we actually tell the rocket to rotate, now we're pointing away from the direction we're traveling. So when we're on the opposite side of the planet near the, uh, near the periapsis, we're pointing retrograde or away from our travel, okay? So right now, we're pointing retrograde. Basically, orbit is you are falling and you are not hitting, you know, what you're falling towards. So the gravity of Earth is pulling us down towards Earth. It's acting on us very roughly, perpendicularly to our plane of travel, right? So... Since we're falling towards Earth, but we're also moving forward, moving prograde uh, at a velocity of 1,643 meters per second, we're, we're basically moving further forward than we do downwards. And, you know, the, the Earth is constantly pulling on us, and we just keep moving forward, and... You know, we keep falling around the horizon, and we never actually hit the planet. So, you know, when we add or subtract more sp the speed, it basically changes the way that we, um, <laughs> the way that we travel, right? So let's go to the highest point in our orbit, the apoapsis, and what we're going to do is we're going to start our engines up at the apoapsis, at the highest point in our orbit, right? All right, so we're going to face prograde here, face in the direction we're traveling. And now we are going to turn our engines on, and we're going to watch our periapsis. Oh, it just switched to the apoapsis, right? And it's, it's going upwards. Hmm. So what's happening here, right? We're adding velocity, adding sideways velocity to our travel, to our craft. And that's meaning that we're going to get further away from the Earth here. And then it's going to, we're going to actually, you know, go a little bit further beyond where it's pulling on us. And then it's finally going to capture us again and slow us down and bring us back around and then we're going to hit the point, the periapsis, and start to speed up again. Because, and that's because the orbit is more elliptical, it's not circular. But you can see it, you can see the velocity change as we go higher and lower, right? So whenever you burn uh, prograde, whenever you go forward faster, what you're going to do is you're going to raise the opposite side of your orbit. So, for example, we were at the highest point. We pointed prograde, and we burned, um, you know, at 31% of our throttle, and that raised the apoapsis to 88.9 kilometers, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to go around again, and we're going to turn retrograde and burn. So stop a little early so I have plenty of time to turn around here. There we go. There we are. So now we're 
at the, uh, the periapsis, the lowest point, we're facing retrograde, and when we burn, it's going to lower the opposite side of our orbit, which is currently right over here. There you are. See how that gets smaller and smaller and smaller? We're going to go back to about 46 or so. There we go. See how it's switched? So now we're almost in a circular orbit once again. So basically that's how you're going to control your orbit. You're going to add speed to things and that's going to change how your orbital, you know, trajectory is. You're going to go further away from a planet the faster you're going, but then you're going to slowly lose speed because the planet or whatever body you're closest to is exerting gravity on you. And eventually it'll slow you down to the point where it pulls you back towards it. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to face into the planet, so towards the object we're orbiting. Now, when we're facing the sideways, basically parallel to the object we're orbiting, this is going to be a radial burn. And if we turn our... Uh, let's actually wait until we're at the apoapsis, and then we can... We can view how this affects the apoapsis and the periapsis. All right, so we're facing the planet at the apoapsis. We're at 46.4 and 40, 45.1. So when we burn, what's it doing? All right, so basically what we've done is we've changed the orbital trajectory, right? So we only burn for like a second here, and we rotated the orbit around the point we currently are at. So, you know, up here, this quadrant, we that's the stuck point, and we rotated the, orb, uh, the orbital trajectory such that our periapsis is almost in the atmosphere, but our apoapsis is way outside of the atmosphere. So we're going to go around again, and we are going to get to roughly the same spot. So right about there, we're going to point outward towards space, away from the body we're orbiting, and we're going to burn radial out. Now what that should do is pivot our orbital trajectory around ourselves, in the opposite direction. So our apoapsis will go down, our periapsis will go up, and there we are, right? 50, 45, so let's just hit that again real quick. So something like that, 48 and 46, we could go even a little bit further here, uh, maybe that's a little too far, <laughs> but we've basically rotated our orbit back to where it was before. It's not quite circular here because radial burns aren't as easy to, you know, work with, but it's pretty close and you get the idea. That should show you how it works. Now, the next thing we're going to do is we're just going to go back into the Earth here. We're going to land and when we, when we do this, Let's think about the most efficient way to do this, right? We need to lower a point on our orbit. So it's going to be most efficient to lower the point that's already closest to the planet. So to do that, we're going to move ourselves to the apoapsis here. We're going to warp through time. And we can stop... Oh, right about now. So we're back to normal acceleration. We're almost at the apoapsis. And we're pointing retrograde. We're pointing away from the direction we're traveling in. So we can throttle down and turn on our thruster. And that's going to lower the already lowest point of our orbit back into the atmosphere. Okay? So basically, we're just going to just going to speed up here and we want to make sure that as we're going into the atmosphere we're pointing really roughly away from the planet here so something like this and eventually 
actually fairly quickly we're going to hit the 25 kilometer mark and then we're not going to be able to speed up and uh, accelerate through time there we are so now we're back in the gravity uh, not gravity we're back in the atmosphere it no longer lets us speed up we're going to separate our stage here that's going to fall down what we want to do is sort of turn ourselves almost in the direction of our travel so that the flat bottom of this capsule is basically creating more drag because there's more air under that flat side and as you see we're actually no longer orbiting the planet like we were our apoapsis is actually fairly quickly dropping right we're now at 24.1 so basically we're slowing down and we're slowing down pretty fast it'll continue to pick up if this was another more advanced uh, space simulator game, you'd probably have to worry about uh, friction from the air, you know, melting your capsule and whatnot. But we don't have to worry about that in this one. <laughs> That's not a feature in this game yet. So, as we get lower and lower in the atmosphere, the velocity bleed off is going to increase because the atmosphere is thicker the lower we get, right? So, I don't know, probably about 15 kilometers, it's going to just pick right up. I mean, that's, that's pretty fast, actually, if you, if you think about it. So we just need to wait a second here, and uh, our, our apoapsis might actually catch up with us. Mm, probably not quite. make sure that we're keeping ourselves pointed really roughly in the correct direction here in the direction we're traveling and I mean we're doing pretty good here now you can actually switch between modules here and we'll do this while we wait when you select something you get a couple options if you're selecting your active module you can only follow it but if you select other ones you can set them as targets or you can switch to them and you know We've got our fuel tank and our thruster out of control here. We can switch to them or destroy them if we don't have them active. And we don't want to destroy it, so we're just going to switch back to it. Now, remember the criteria for um, opening our parachute. We need to be moving at less than um, 250 meters per second. And we need a height of less than... 2,500 meters off the surface. So we've actually met both of those. But again, to cut down on some of the fall time, I'm actually going to wait. This time I'm going to wait until, oh, let's just say, let's just say 500 meters off the ground here. And I'm going to zoom in so I make sure I actually hit the parachute and don't miss because you know we wouldn't want to crash into the surface at this point this poor astronaut has accomplished so much so there's 500 our parachutes half deployed it really quickly slows us down to about 13 meters per second which that'll continue to drop we're at 300 meters off the ground so now we just need to wait for the parachute to open up all the way which happens at 100 meters off the ground so we got, you know, 12 meters per second at 100 meters. That's what, roughly six seconds. There's the parachute opening all the way. Now, we have about, oh, let's say 35 more seconds. Actually, it's probably closer to 20 seconds because it's 2.9 meters per second. And then we will be on the ground. So we've accomplished so much with this one. We actually get a, a module into space. We got in orbit. We explained how orbit works really roughly. And then our poor little astronaut friend made it back to Earth unharmed. So let's recover the mission. There we are. We passed the Kármán line, leaving the atmosphere and reaching space, and we reached a low orbit. So that'll be it. Next time when we return, we are going to launch a satellite into space. So keep an eye out for that episode. Thank you all so much for watching. My name's Zira, and this is the Nocturnal Gaming Network, bringing you Space Flight Simulator.
Have yourselves a wonderful night, everybody.